Yeah, hello guys, good evening. Good evening, sir. Yeah. <clears throat> okay so today we have the last uh, session means regular session and then next class onwards we have crash course no you have the info right yes sir Yeah, so uh, you know how the uh, crash course will go on, how we have planned it. You know the inform. You have the information. It's just going to be problem solving. Just a second, Richard. Yeah, so it will be a problem solving session. Okay, we'll have brief theory of the entire chapter. It will be theory and then problems, then it will be theory and then problems. So theory will not go in detail. Okay, we'll just have a brief you know, introduction of the entire thing. So you have to come prepared with the theory. Okay, so what is the first session? What is the first topic we have? You know that? So I think more concept. Mole concept and atomic structure, I guess, right? Yes, sir. Yes, so planner you have already, you can you know, uh, revise chapters according to that planner. So it's going to be uh, you know very hectic for you. Uh, every subject you will be having two sessions in a week, right? So six days is completely occupied and then Sunday you will have a test, right? Okay, any, any info regarding uh, notification from NTA. No. Okay. So we'll start it. See, first of all, uh, the salt analysis chapter, like I said, last class, it has two, you know, two portions. One is that we have done, um, that is quantitative analysis detection of carbon, hydrogen, uh, nitrogen, phosphorus, uh, sulfur, and all those halogens, right? So like I said, last class also three methods, Carius, Dumas, Geldal, okay? These three methods are important, very important. In fact, if you are talking about these particular this particular chapter, correct, that you need to do. This portion, the second part, that is qualitative analysis, Okay, salt, salt analysis, we have both parts over here, qualitative and quantitative analysis. So we are going to do today qualitative analysis.
क्वालिटेटिव एनालिसिस सो एज फार एज जेई मेन इज कंसर्न दिस चैप्टर इज नॉट दैट इंपॉर्टेंट दिस पोर्शन इज नॉट दैट इंपॉर्टेंट ओके I won't say they won't ask any question from this, but chances are very less. Okay, chances are very less, and the entire chapter is based on uh, it's it's theoretical completely. A theoretical we can say we have experiments and experiments based result we have there in the chapter. Those results we need to study. Okay, like how to identify a given radicals. Radical means uh, we can have acidic radicals, we can have basic radicals. so given an ion like suppose sulfate ion how do we uh, detect how do we identify that this is the sulfate ion we have what is the uh, you know reactions for that what is the test for that okay so these things which is already done or all these experiments has been conducted in the lab and those results is there in this chapter okay that is what we are going to study so you need to mug up these things completely if you look at the portions the entire chapter is It's, it's it's very big the entire thing because we have one uh, theme uh, you will understand how these chapters we are going to study right but suppose we have one ion like suppose chloride ion for chloride ion we have many test many different reactions so five six different test we have with that particular test we'll get a particular result if that result we get then the ion is chloride ion so like this we have test analysis results for all the ions whether it is negative or uh, negative ions or positive ions correct now you can understand that we are, we study a lot of ions like halide ion also if you can see we have chloride ion bromide ion iodide ion sulfide ion nitrite ion okay then some positive ions also we have as well right so for all these ions we have different different results different different reactions so all these reactions we need to study so obviously if you look at the uh, chapter it's it's too big right but the weightage is concerned uh, you know as far as j exam is concerned the weightage is not that uh, you know uh, much in the proportion if you see so that is what i would like to say i would like to suggest right ncrt you can go through once for this chapter okay for j mains point of view the chapter is not that important we have one complete session for this four hour session we'll try that we can cover up everything in this particular session okay so we'll start with uh, uh this chapter see qualitative analysis uh is obviously if you try to analyze what ions are there you need to what you need to uh, understand what is the reaction of that particular ion what is the property of that particular ion right so obviously to detect or to identify the ions present this chapter is obviously it's important like in order to understand which ion is there right so it is basically important part of chemistry however if you look at for you know a competitive exam point of view it is not that important but if you talk about chemistry then this chapter is important okay so what is the purpose of this particular chapter the purpose is to identify the different con constituents constituent ions okay the purpose is the objective here the entire objective is to identify identify the constituent ions the constituent ions okay So when you talk about ions, ions we can have of two types. Okay, cations and anions. right here anions we also call it as here anions we are calling it as acid radicals anions are acid radicals and cations are 
basic radicals. Okay, this is how we classified anions, cations. Anions are acidic radicals or acid radicals. It is basic radicals. So first of all, we can uh, you know we can examine these ions uh, like prelim preliminary examine examination we can do for these ions. Like preliminary examination means what? We can talk about color. We can talk about color. We can talk about heating effect. On heating, what happens? Heating effect. We can talk about a few tests, like we have flame test, borax bead test, etc. We'll see that. These things we can talk about for preliminary examination. Okay, so what are the different techniques we use to examine these radicals that we are going to see? But before that, we'll see some physical characteristics. Okay, copy this down first. Done. Heading right down. Physical characteristics. Okay, so what is the physical characteristics? So we can talk about, like I said, we can talk about the color. What are the color of the uh, compounds we have? And this obviously you need to memorize. Okay, so if you talk about the color here, the first uh, you know, factor, we'll talk about color. Yeah, if you talk about color, first thing you see, what are compounds which has black color, right? Obviously this is, you need to, something that you need to memorize. Okay, the black color compounds we have, we can have oxides, we can have sulfides, and we can have some, uh, you know, we, we call it blackish brown, okay. Sulfides only, compounds only, we can say. So you see some oxides of black color. If you look at the example, oxides of black color, we have MnO2, 
एफ ई ओ सी यू ओ देन वी हैव कोबाल्ट ऑक्साइड सीओ थ्री ओ फोर एफ ई थ्री ओ फोर एंड निकल का ऑक्साइड एन आई टू ओ थ्री एन आई टू ओ थ्री सम सल्फाइड्स इफ यू सी द एग्जाम्पल ऑफ सल्फाइड्स ऑफ ब्लैक कलर we have ag2s black color cus black color fes cu2s all these are black color compounds one compound we have which we write in this one only but these are blackish brown actually exact color if you see it is blackish brown these are also sulfides like cos cobalt sulfide we have nickel we have lead pbs we have hgs and we have then bi2s3 so obviously all these compounds have same color right suppose sulfides we have two compounds of same color ag2s and cus so only color is not sufficient right only with color we cannot uh, differentiate so obviously after after getting the color we can obviously uh, you know um distinguish whether it is an oxide or sulfides but then in that oxide to sulfides which oxides or sulfide is there for that we have different steps like we have chemical reaction and other steps we have in this but first step is this that is why we are calling it as pre preliminary steps right we can figure it out whether any sulfide is there or any oxide is there so first one is black the second one you write down that is blue okay blue color if you see we have hydrated a uh, sulfate for example we have hydrated sulfate that is hydrated cuso4 hydrated cuso4 we have anhydrous cobalt sulfate also in this category anhydrous cobalt sulfate in this category third one is orange color orange we have ko2 some dichromate like potassium dichromate k2cr2o7 and we have some ferric cyanides and we have ferric cyanides so you see all these compounds are there but k2cr2 or 7 if you remember we use this in uh this in redox right redox also we use this type of strong form. oxidizing agent sorry strong oxidizing agent yeah so that's why this one since we use in other topics also so this one is a bit important okay color of this and all okay so you have so many compounds but few are important 
which probably if you go through, I will also let you know which one is more important that, that definitely you need to keep in mind. I will tell you that. Third one is orange. Fourth one, we, we have green. We have nickel, the salt of nickel, simply I write on nickel salts. Nickel salts. Then we have potassium magnate, that is K2MnO4. Remember it is magnet, it's not per magnet, K2MnO4. Some copper salts in which the copper ka oxidation state is two. Copper two salts. We can also have chromium the salt in which the chromium oxidation state is three. Chromium three salt. Red is HgI2, lead oxide Pb3O4, yellow, yellow is some sulfide in this also we have, CDS is yellow, don't get confused, it's not black, CDS AGBR, you see it is important. AGBR is yellow. AGI is also yellow. Okay. PBI2. Okay. These are the examples we have. So, it is HDI2 Nestler's reagent? Sorry? So, it is HDI2 Nestler's reagent? Nestler is K2HDI. I4. Okay. Not HGI2. So green, you can write FESO4 also, right? I did it. In which one? So in green. Ha uh ha, -huh, that also you can take. Hydrated cobalt salt, in which the oxidation state of cobalt is 2, that has redis pink color, reddish pink. We have hydrated cobalt salt, oxidation state is two. Hydrated cobalt salt. Okay, one more important one you see purple colors. Purple is a very important one. We have uh, KMNO4, potassium per magnet. Okay. FeCl3, normally it is dark brown, write down one thing. FeCl3, normally it is dark brown, but in solution it is yellow. FeCl3. Okay. Now there are a few compounds which changes its color on heating. Right? So heading it right down. Color change on heating. So I'll write down here, uh, we have uh, compounds, which is mainly oxides we have. We have compounds here and um, we have color here. This side I'll write down when it is cold. In cold means when the temperature is low and when the temperature is more that is on heating. 
what is the color change we have on heating. So let me just draw this. Okay, so if you look at compounds here, we can have uh, ZnO, the zinc oxide. In when the temperature is low, its color is white, and on heating, it changes into yellow. Zinc oxide. SnO two, Bi two O three. Its color is yellow, and when you heat this, it turns into yellowish brown. Okay, Fe two O three. This is brown, and when you heat this, it becomes black red, blackish red or black red. You can say. Okay, so these are the few compounds we have which change its color on heating. Few ions and its color. Okay, first we copy this down. I'll go to the next slide. Done. Okay. There are few ions, and it's uh, you know it's color of the solution. Heading right down. Color of the solution. Like if we talk about CrO four two minus, we have Fe three plus FeCN six four minus. All these ions in solution, it is yellow in color. Yellow color solution basically. If you have Cu two plus, Ni two plus, Fe two plus, Cr three plus, and its solution color is green or blue. Okay, Co two plus, Mn two plus. It is pink. Similarly, some salt also they give characteristic smell. Okay, like you see when you get smells like vinegar or acetic acid type, then it means it is acetate uh, ion. We have CS three CO minus. Ammonical smell means ammonical ion present. Not much important. Just you can leave this particular part. Okay. Now this is the preliminary examination. 
okay which we which from which we'll get the idea that okay if the color is yellow then these these ions may present over there okay green these these ions may present over there further we have the next step that how do we detect each and every ion here so for detection of each and every ion this entire this part only the entire organic chemistry here is classified into three groups okay that we discuss under analysis of ions sorry anions analysis of anions okay so like i said anions for analysis it is classified into two groups one is acidic radical and other one is basic radical right so if you talk about acidic radical here which is nothing but anions but ions are classified into two acidic and basic radicals acidic radicals are anion itself basic radicals are cations so we are talking about anions here which means we are talking about acidic radical both are same thing so for this also we have three different groups in this means under anions we have three different groups okay so group 1 you see in this group 1 we have ions like carbonate ion ca3 to minus CH three COO minus carbonate ion, sulfite ion, S two O three two minus, and we can also have nitrite ion NO two minus. All these ions belongs into group one. It is kept into group one, and for this, for detection and other things, what we use here. we use dilute hcl right we use dilute hcl or h2so4 now why these anions are kept uh, here in this group 1 we consider only those anions here which gets decomposed by dilute hcl or h2so4 write down these are the anions these are the anions which get decomposed by dilute hcl or h2so4 this is okay correct similarly we have group 2 anions here i'll write down first all the three group and then we'll discuss discuss it one by one group 2 the anion contains it has sulfate ion as a 4 to minus oxalate ion c2o4 to minus we can also have phosphate ion and we also have bo3 3 minus but one second one second this is second group 2 is acha wait i have written it in other way not these one these are the group 
cations we have. Group two contains group two are those compounds which are decomposed by conk S two S O four, right? Concentrated S two S O four. So for that we have halide ions. We have uh, generally we have Cl minus, Br minus, I minus, NO three minus, F minus. Also you can write mainly this. Okay. So these are the anions which are decomposed by concentrated H two S O four. Write down. These are the anions which are decomposed by concentrated H two S O four. Copy this down. Okay, group three anions you see. Group three anions we have sulfate anion C two O four that is oxalate anion phosphate and BO three three minus. In group three, we take all those anions which are not covered in first two categories. Means what all anions are left will drop into this category that is group three over here. So here we cover, or we'll have all those anions which are not covered in, or which are not present in group one or group two, which is extracted above, which is you know stated above. Okay. So when we have anion, uh, no mixture. So during the anion analysis of the mixture, we use two different types of extract here, right? So that is extract we call it as water extract or sodium carbonate extract. Okay. So write down this point first. Um, An anion may interfere an anion may interfere during the detection of an anion may interfere. During the detection of other anion, in such cases, in such cases, In such cases, water extract, water extract, or sodium extract can be used. Water extract or sodium extract can be used. So, how do we prepare water extract? That you see, a small uh, thing we have here. So, yes. So, uh, which one decomposes the uh, group three anions? Sorry. So, what decomposes group three anions? No, in in this we don't have such classification. Like group one and group two, we have group one is dilute HCl or H two SO four. Group two is concentrated H two SO four. Right. In group three, we don't have such classification. It simply says. That what all anions are left after these two groups that will drop into this category. Yes, sir. Okay, 
So water extract, whenever you use water extract after this, just to use the word WE, means water extract. Okay, we use this abbreviation for this. Water extract, uh, obviously the preparation method is not important, but just for, just for the understanding, you should know what is water extract. It is a small amount of uh, once again. Huh. So we'll take the uh, mixture, the compound that we have, which we need to detect, and that we're very small amount. So I'll write down here a small amount of a small amount is 40, 30, 40, 30 to 50 milligram in that range. Small amount, uh, which can be less than 50 milligram of the mixture. Of the mixture is dissolved in. is dissolved in 2 to 5 ml, 2 to 5 ml of distilled water distilled water and boiled for and boiled for Uh, like a minute, one or two minute, and centrifuge, and centrifuge. Okay, the centrifuge that we get here means after centrifuge, whatever the mixture we get, that we call it as water extract. One second. The centrifuges we get, we call it as water extract. So when we said that there are uh, two uh, anions, so which is the second anion which will interfere? See that we that we don't have any control. You have a mixture of any organic substance, right? There are many substances present into that. It's like you can understand. Uh, it's like uh, you have an, uh, a mineral, right? So in mineral, we have many impurities, no? So what impurities? It depends upon what, you know, is the mineral you have, correct? And it depends upon the other condition also, like the geographical condition also, what all impurities are present, right? So in any compound, we can have many such anions present. It's not like only one anion is present over there. Point is, whenever you have more than one anion present, like suppose we have a uh, sulfate anion present and, and phosphate anion is present into that. So to detect one of the anion, we need to understand what? We need to understand which anion is present over here. So if we have more, a mixture of anions present, if we have that condition, then one particular anion will also interfere in the reaction. And hence it, you know, it will be difficult to detect that a particular anion is present in this particular mixture. Are you getting my point? Yes, I understood, sir. Right, centrifuge, you understand what is a centrifuge? Centrifuge is, is kind of, you know, uh, uh, I, I like, usually... Sorry. So it's when you rotate it, right? Yes, so you yeah, rotate it at high speed. speed. Washing machine, the concept is based on centrifuge only. Right, yes. it rotates and very high centrifugal force acts on it. So basically when we have uh, the difference in uh, you know densities of the fluid it is used to separate the two uh, uh, fluid we can say so different density we have so different force it will act and uh, since it acts on the uh, outward direction away from the center so in that way it can accumulate the particles on the outer periphery and then when it settles down you will get it two separate layer which we can easily a separate we can easily take it out so in short like in rough you know roughly i have give you given you the idea of what is a centrifuge and all but again in the college and all you will need to do all these experiments
right? So that is centrifuge. So the centrifuge is, and the centrifuge that you get, the mixture that you get after centrifugation, that is called water extract over here, over here, correct? Now, similarly, we have one more, uh, you know, mixture that we use for detection purpose, that is sodium carbonate extract. If you remember, we have done this in a metallurgy also a bit. We use sodium carbon uh, extract over there. Sodium carbonate extract. SCE in short will write. SCE. In this also, a small amount, in short, just write down, a small amount of mixture is added. Right, a small amount of mixture we have taken. So around 40 to 50, again, a milligram of the mixture. In that we add, I'll write down the composition. Suppose we have 40 gram of mixture. In that we'll add around 200 gram of milligram, I'm sorry. Here also it is milligram. It is also milligram. 200 milligram of uh, Na2CO3, sodium carbonate we mix, plus five milligram of distilled water. Distilled water. Boiled for five minutes and centrifuge. We'll get sodium carbonate extract. Okay. Now, one by one, we'll see all these groups and I like group one, what are anions are there? What are the methods? Then group two and then group three. Okay. So in group one, I'm taking carbonate ion. Carbonates. So obviously what is the reagent we're using here? Dilute HCl and dilute H2SO4, okay? So I'm not giving you the theory over here, like it reacts with dilute HCl and all, I'm not giving you that. Reaction simply you see whatever compound we have Na2CO3, it reacts with H2SO4. Obviously we must have some carbonate, reacts with H2SO4, forms Na2SO4. We have dilute H2SO4 here, yeah? do you remember that? We have Na2SO4, then H2O and then CO2. This is the uh, reaction we have. Now CO2 evolves here with effervescence. CO2 evolves here with effervescence and that confirms the presence of carbonate ion in the mixture. Okay, further you see, this CO2 reacts with lime water, that is CaOH whole twice, converts into CaCO3 plus H2O. So we have here white precipitate. of CaCO3.
correct? So these are the chemical reactions involved into this. Okay, sodium calcium carbonate forms. It turns milky, white precipitate, and H2 evolves. One note you write down into this. Ah, one more thing you write down, one more reaction we have here. The calcium carbonate that forms here, it also get dissolved in presence of, in water in presence of CO2. And it converts into CaHCO3 whole twice, which is also insoluble. Sorry, which is also soluble. By so it becomes clearer after soluble. some time. Yeah, right. So this is a chemical reaction involved in this. One note you write down here. Obviously, we have all these are reactions. It's not like all these reactions are true for all types of carbonates. Correct. So write down here, carbonates of bismuth and barium Bismuth and barium are not decomposed by are not decomposed by dilute H two SO four. Right, barium and bismuth carbonate are not decomposed by dilute H2SO4. Next point, one more. PVCO3 reacts with dilute HCl or dilute H2SO4 So can you repeat the salt name again? PV, the second point Yes, sir. Yeah, the second, yeah, second point write down. PbCO3 reacts with dilute, sorry, reacts with huh, dilute HCl or H2SO4. But the reaction slows down. But the reaction slows down due to the formation of due to the formation of protective insoluble layer due to the formation of protective insoluble soluble layer of PVCl2 and PVSO4. Okay, protective insoluble layer of PB, Cl2 and PBSO4. So this is for carbonates. So what you have to keep in mind that CO2 gas evolves, which is obviously a colorless and odorless gas. So it evolves with the brisk effervescence in Cold, right? Effervescence with effervescence comes out. Okay. Next write down the second type of anion in this group one. That is that is carbonate. Sorry, nitrite ion. Nitrite ion. Write down, it reacts with dilute H2SO4. Dilute H2SO4. Right? 
it reacts with dilute s2 so4 Hello, can you hear me? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I uh, I lost the connection. I guess. One second. Who is the host now? Ach, I have become the host. Anyways. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now it's fine. Everything. Just a second. Yeah. So, uh, nitrous acid it forms, uh, which in contact with air becomes brown due to the formation of nitrogen dioxide. this information you have to memorize okay uh, can you repeat it again ha uh, again i am repeating nitrous acid forms which in contact with air which in contact with air becomes brown due to the formation of nitrogen dioxide right okay the reaction involved in this we have 2 nano2 nitrite ion no2 minus plus h2so4 it convert into na2so4 plus hno2 this is called nitrous acid hno2 nitrous acid now this hno2 decomposes into h2o then no and hno3 nitric acid three moles of hno2 okay and we have one nitrogen here so two here 2 3 3 plus 3 6 so 6 yeah it's balanced this is the reaction now this no monooxide that we have this combines with atmospheric oxygen and converts into nitrogen dioxide that is no2 brown gas okay now in this only we have a reaction one more thing is there this no2 that evolves here this may also react with a, a, a compound having ki solution reacts with ki basically and evolves iodine gas okay so no2 produced can reacts with ki which results into the formation of iodine gas and this iodine reacts with the starch 
and forms the and forms the adsorption complex which is bluish violet in color okay so basically you should know that no2 can also oxidize ki into i2 that's the basic information we have now in this we have one important test we call it as brown ring test brown ring test right in this what happens in water extract we in water extract freshly prepared iron sulfate feso4 in water extract freshly prepared iron sulfate is added and we also add dilute h2so4 in the mixture so could you repeat this uh, in water extract a freshly prepared iron sulfate feso4 is added right freshly prepared iron sulfate is added a small amount of dilute h2so4 also added in the test tube comma a brown ring forms a brown ring forms at the junction and it is due to the formation of and it is due to the formation of this compound fe H2O five NO sorry F E H two O five NO bracket close SO four. This complex forms, and because of that only we have the brown ring forms over there. Okay. now what is important here remember in uh, this thing uh, what we say uh, coordination compound we have discussed about ano ligand right okay ano is uh, if you look go back and check your notes ano i have given in both type of ligands it is it is neutral as well as positive charged ligand yes or no yes sir Yes, if not then you keep this in mind ano has both kind of behavior it can be as it can behave as a neutral compound and it can behave as a positive charge uh, uh, ligand right but in this brown ring test this ano is behaving as a positive charge ligand must keep this in mind very important it's a positive charge ligand right right down this brown ring complex this brown ring complex is paramagnetic in nature with three unpaired electrons brown ring complex is paramagnetic in nature with three unpaired electrons so it's not like we have only one uh, you know experiment this one is a bit uh, more important in fact that's why we have discussed this and brown color ring forms over here but we have other kind of test also in order to detect nitrite ion we can perform other test also okay so if you have this one by one i'll write down two three uh, different test over here see if you have the mixture that you have taken in which we need to detect that is the mixture we have here in this mixture we'll add dilute h2so4 group 1 dilute h2so4 we are adding if you add dilute h2so4 
then we have the same thing i'm just writing down in this uh, uh, equation manner we have uh, light brown pungent fumes light brown pungent fumes evolved so when this evolved it confirms the presence of no2 minus i this is another detection technique we have like i said we have other methods also easy method easy method is what we'll take a paper this paper will dip in ki and start solution in ki and starch solution start solution and this paper after dipping this into the solution we place the paper at the mouth of the test tube place the paper at the mouth of the test tube of the test tube of the test tube what happens then if this you will do then the paper turns bluish violet blue also you can say or bluish violet paper turns blue is violet this confirms the presence of again no2 minus iron okay these are the few more methods we have to detect nitrite iron obviously the brown ring one is the most important but these two also you can keep in mind I have a question. So, how is the brown ring paramagnetic if it's NO plus? Because it's an NO plus strongly ion. Hmm. One second. I did not check the configuration. NO plus you have right. H two is neutral, so we have minus two plus two. uh so it is plus 2 and plus 1 so it will be what is the oxidation state of iron in this so comes plus 1 i is plus 1 right so i is plus 1 so fe plus the configuration is argon 4s1 and 3d 6 correct no Yes, sir. yes, sir. Okay, if you look at this orbital diagram, it is three D. Four S, four P. So we have one electron here, and six we have here. One, two, three, four. Five, six. Okay, ha. Huh. So in this what? See, it is a factual statement. First of all, Rujari understood. Yes, sir. It is the factual thing. Uh, remember when you do this kind of question in BBT, there are some more information given that this uh, you know compound has four, uh, two different types of bond length. Out of you know all the bond lengths, four are equal. One is different, and then we realize that okay, this is. Square pyramidal geometry. 
an example I'm giving you. So along with the complex, you must require some information, right? It is true that when the ligand is strong, maybe you are thinking that all these electron will get paired and yes. will have one unpaired electron, right? Yes, sir. Right. But that is not true here because it is a factual statement. It's magnetic moment. You will get when the unpaired electron n value, you are getting three. Then only its magnetic moment is getting satisfied. So what we conclude here, we conclude that out of this five unpaired electron, only one pairing is taking place. That is, that is also possible in some cases. Okay. okay. And the three electrons are unpaired only. That's why the obviously number of unpaired electron gives you more or less magnetic moment. But if it is paramagnetic, obviously that is true. So it's not like uh, he whatever number of unpaired electron is there, all the electrons will get paired just because the ligand is strong. That is not always true. Huh. Most of the time it is true. It is fine. But in some cases like this one, you have to keep this in mind. This is actually, this one is very important. Right. Magnetic behavior, I don't remember. But this information they have asked, like positive charge, you should know whether it is neutral or positive charge over here. Okay, yes, sir. Okay. So this sir, better how... you take it as an information. Ha, huh? tell me. So then how did you predict that only one will get paired and others? Ah, that is what you cannot predict. That's what Richard I explained. That we find out the number of unpaired electron or the geometry of the complex or you know the magnetic moment. It's 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 not theoretical. Logically, we are not calculating it. It's experimentally it is there, right? But in some cases we have exception. Like answer to your question, how do we predict only one electron will get paired? We don't have any control on this. Why we are saying three? Because if it is one, it has a root three magnetic moment, right? But this is not the magnetic moment observed in the case of this, right? The kind of behavior it has in presence of magnetic or electric field, it is not satisfied by only one unpaired electron. Right. So yes, these are the factual thing that you should memorize. You should keep this in mind. Even in VBT also, we have the same thing. But in most of the cases, we can understand this way that the ligand is strong. So pairing will take place. And like this, we have the uh, vacant orbital and then the hybridization is this. But in few cases, the no, the entire thing goes on facts. So you, this one is one of the those one of those cases we have over here. Correct. Not much, this kind of cases you won't get much. If you remember that time also, I'll tell you that in order to predict the geometry, they will give you the information, right? Like suppose one example, if I go back and take, if you have trigonal by pyramidal, to understand this, we can also think of a square pyramidal geometry. Both has coordination number five, isn't it? Yes. Coordination number five. But how do we know that this is trigonal by pyramidal? It is a square pyramidal. For this, one information will be given in the question that it has two different types of bond length. Three bond lengths will be same and two will be different. Okay, axial and equatorial, which is not in this case. And hence we predict that the geometry is trigonal by pyramidal. So this kind of information is given in the question. And that's how we can predict. Okay, here we do not have, so this you have to keep in mind. Achha, done, and two one is we are done with it. We have sulfite next, take care. Write down the sulfite ion next. So you can understand there are so many reactions and so many you know, tests we have for one particular ion. And like this, we have so many ions are there. So there's no end of this chapter, if I frankly, if I tell you. There's so many things you have to mug up simply. That's why I would say, uh, just like for this one, is very important. Okay, this one you have to keep in mind. Few things you just do, and that only you keep in mind. Because for J means this chapter is not that important. Third type of anion you write down sulfite ion. That is SO3 2 minus.
okay in sulfite ion what happens chemical reaction i'll tell you what is the chemical reaction involved the experiment by which we infer that sulfite ion is present is what okay we'll take mixture mixture and we'll drop few drops of dilute acid because it belongs to group 1 we can take dilute hcl or dilute h2so4 right and we heat this so on heating what happens we get what we observe here the observation is a colorless gas a colorless gas of pungent and suffocating order of pungent and suffocating order we get this which confirms the presence of sulfide ion this order is similar to the order of burning sulfur like the burning sulfur we have this confirms the sulfide ion here filter paper also we use for this another method is what the experimental process is what we do the filter paper we take and this will take in the environment of a uh, k2cr2o7 dilute K means we'll take the solution of k2cr2o7 also and this filter paper is moistened in this solution right we'll have a moisture of this solution on this filter paper right and when you add dilute h2so4 here because this is the reagent we have for group 1 dilute h2so4 then what happens here the observation is what this is the experiment observation is the color of the paper turns green color of the paper turns green this also confirms the presence of sulfide ion green color that we have copy this down now in advance how they frame the question on this they will give you a one paragraph kind of questions like that we have a, a mixture in which we add this particular uh, h2so4 then the color changes to green okay filter paper was there of this so this information they will write in the question the one that i'm telling you they will write the question as it is and they don't mention the compound over they'll they, they will say like okay it reacts with this and forms a which is you know um, green in color right so what is the ion present in the mixture which you have taken already so this information if you remember then you can answer those questions series wise questions also they frame from this okay this is one two more reaction we have both are important here for this one one is scsc sce sorry sce we use sodium carbonate extract we use and we add dilute hcl in this right dilute hcl we add till the solution becomes acidic and we also add bacl2 into this barium chloride solution we add here we get here white ppt of white precipitate of baso4 white precipitate of baso4 right which is soluble in which is soluble in concentrated hcl so this when happens it confirms the presence of so3 2 minus sulfite ion one more we have in this 
and that is in the mixture we add br2 water bromine water we add in the mixture the simple one is this one bromine water we add in the mixture and it forms baso4 white precipitate baso4 white precipitate which is again insoluble in like here also okay here i have written is soluble by mistake it is insoluble which is insoluble in again concentrated hcl this confirms the presence of so3 to minus ion one second then so it is insoluble in sulfite ion which confirms the presence of sulfite ion over here so these are the uh, testing thing we have in the lab will do this what are, what are the chemical reactions involved chemical reactions we can write down one two chemical reactions i'll write down the important one we have na2so3 because sulfite ion we have so it can have in this form na2so3 and we add uh you can add uh we know it is either you can add h2so4 dilute or hcl if you add this the reaction would be na2so4 plus h2o and you have to eliminate sulfide ion so3 mm, so2 sulfur dioxide sulfur dioxide evolve into this one then so the colorless gas was so2 no sulfur dioxide evolves here no so we say that because uh, along with this sulfide ion is also forming so we say okay in the mixture the sample that we have in this sulfide ion is present colorless gas is so2 here we have okay sir so it's not like that we have sulfide ion so here in the product side we'll get sulfide ion right okay bacl2 that we have the third one you see the reaction here na2so3 so3 plus hcl plus bacl2 if it reacts sodium extract we are using here so it forms nacl plus h2o plus sulfide ion we get baso3 precipitated forms
Achha, just let me check one thing. I think I have done one mistake. Achha, here there's a change. Just a second. This is, ha, I think it was this. It forms white precipitate of BaSO3 and BaSO3 is soluble in cons. That's fine. Not BaSO4, I have, was, I have written BaSO4 initially. It is BaSO3 it forms. Okay. Now in this only what happens, we have all this solution. And in this, if you add bromine water, then it converts into the insoluble sulfate, that is BaSO4, right? So we say here what? That in this solution, in above solution, in above solution, if we add bromine water, Br2 water, it converts into into insoluble BaSO4, barium sulfate. One more reaction, which is not obviously, you know, the detection of sulfide ion here, but this, you know, one color that we get here, a compound, that color you must memorize. If you have K2Cr2O7 and it reacts with H2SO4 in presence of sulfur dioxide, means basically you have this solution, the first reaction you see, we have sulfur dioxide. And when we add K2Cr2O7 into this solution, then this reaction is possible, right? And it converts into sodium sulfate, Na2SO4 plus H2O plus sulfur dioxide, SO2. Is it this? No, we have Cr2, which I've written it other thing. What I'm doing, I'm sorry. This is one we have, no. It forms Cr2SO4 whole thrice, which is green in color. So this question they have asked once. Cr2SO4 whole thrice, it is green in color. And along with this, we get K2SO4 and H2O. So this color you must remember. Sulfur dioxide is the uh, gas we have, which has the suffocating smell. Just confirming all these things. You get the suffocating smell. Okay, so if you want to confirm this, fine. Suffocating is uh, SO2. You add K2Cr2O7 to that solution. Then the color changes to green because of the formation of this chromium sulfate. And hence it is confirmed. Okay, next we'll see the test of sulfide ion, S minus two. S minus two. Achha. So the first, you know, experiment, what we do here, again, we'll take the mixture, which we need to analyze and we'll add dilute H2SO4. Dilute H2SO4 we get a colorless gas, colorless gas with rotten egg smell. Rotten egg smell, uh, like H2S. H2S can smell be as I hope that. H2S, hand sulfide.
this confirms the presence of sulfide ion. So basically H2S evolves in this reaction. We'll see the reaction also. Another method is what? We'll take sodium carbonate extract as CE and we'll add dilute H2SO4. This gives black precipitate, black precipitate of PBS lead sulfide, which confirms S minus two again. Right, if you take sodium carbonate extract, add dilute H2SO4, and along with this, you are also adding CdCO3 solution. Then we'll get CdS, cadmium sulfide you get, and it is yellow in color. This confirms the presence of this sulfide ion. So where is that PB coming from? What? CD? No, sir, the PB in the second reaction. Achha, achha, here. Lead acetate solution. We also add lead acetate along with this. Here we are adding CdCO3, here we are adding lead acetate solution, and then this forms. Then, Okay, so you see what all chemical reactions are involved here. The chemical reactions we have, Na2S plus H2SO4, H2SO4 gives H2S and Na2SO4. If you have lead acetate, PB, CH3, COO, hold twice, plus H2S, it gives uh, lead sulfide, PBS, black, and CH3COOH. This one is black. Okay, so this is the test of uh, a sulfide ion we have. Next we'll do the test of thiosulfate ion. Thiosulfate ion. 